Hello, I'm Joshua Morris. I'm the Homestead Ranger. Today I'm going to talk to you about a solar power command center, or this is your inner center, energy center that's going to be inside your home. I'm not going to talk about how to mount solar panels or wind power or anything like that. This is mainly comprised of your batteries, your charge controller, your inverter, and then all of the accompanying electronics, circuit breakers, and command hubs that go along with that. Now, if you want to find out and refer to all the wiring charts, wiring diagrams, and more detail, you can find that in my book. It's Thrive in the Coming Dark Age, How to Build the Ultimate Survival Homestead. It's currently been a bestseller in three categories on Amazon for three weeks straight now. So let's get right into it. We'll go in the direction that the power comes from. You'll notice that a lot of the protective panels are taken off so that you can see the wiring. We're, I'm going to put those panels on later. Safety is at most priority, but I wanted you to be able to see what's going on today. And I've also turned off certain things where I don't want uh, any kind of loose power or sparks or arcing or anything. But we'll talk about that too. So to get started, the solar panel wires are going to feed in. We've got them feeding in um, through a waterproof jacket. Okay, when they come in, the positive wire, in this case, is going through our circuit breakers. Like I said, you can refer to the charts in the book uh, for what size wire to use. So that positive wire from, in this case, four strings of solar panels comes through our solar panel circuit breaker box. And the ground wires also come through the same box. Now, whenever you're putting these wires in, you want to make sure that you go ahead and cover your solar panels, or otherwise make sure that they're, it's at nighttime and there's no loose electricity or sparking or arcing or anything like that. Once you've hooked up the solar panel wires to the circuit breaker box, you can turn those off and work on the rest of the system without, without having to worry about this loose electricity. Okay, so like I mentioned, the positive wires go through the breakers here and the negative wires from your solar panels are going to go into each charge controller. Now I have four charge controllers. These are Flex Max 30, which means they can take 30 amps. And real quick, let me tell you about the amps and the voltage that I've selected. I have these charge controllers charging batteries at 12 volts. And the reason I did that is because there, is an, there are an abundance of appliances that run off of 12 volts. There are some great, very efficient, extremely efficient refrigerators and freezers that run off of 12 volts. It's very easy to find 12 volt lighting, 12 volt fans, or basically anything that people want to run in an RV. And that's why I've used that. I've installed other systems that are higher voltage. And if you're mainly wanting to convert that power to 110 to 120 volts AC power, then you might want to consider a higher voltage for your batteries. But this actually works very well for me. This system has been working this way for 13 years. And I feel that in a very long emergency grid down situation, this system would actually give me all the power that I need for a long time without failing. Okay, so moving on, we went from the solar panels to the charge controller. Okay, so the negative wire goes into the charge controller directly, and the positive wire goes through the circuit breaker and then into the charge controller, so you can turn those off. Now, in the charge controller, there's simply an in for the positive and an out for the positive. There's an in for the negative and an out for the negative. And your charge controller is going to take that voltage, which is variable, coming from your solar panels, and it's going to turn it in to the exact voltage and amperage that you need to optimally charge your batteries. And so you'll have to check the instructions and based on what type of batteries you use, you can take this charge controller and you can program it for a lithium ion battery, a lead acid battery, or in this case we have nickel iron batteries. And I'll talk about those in a little. So after our wires, so we have four strings like I mentioned going to four charge controllers. After they come out of the charge controllers, the negative then, in our case, goes directly to the negative side of our battery bank. So again, negative comes from the solar panel to the charge controller to the negative side of the battery bank. The positive, of course, goes through the circuit breakers to the charge controller, and then, instead of going straight to the positive side of the battery bank, it's going to come over here to the master breaker box. Now the master breaker box, <clears throat> those wires are going to come in, 
the positives, and then they get combined, and this top combining plate right here, and then they go through a bigger wire. In this case, we're using a two-gauge wire, and that goes to our battery bank to charge our battery bank. So again, the positive comes through this, from the charge controllers to another circuit breaker, and then to your battery bank. And that's just so that you can have that circuit breaker control the power. You can totally turn it off whenever you're working on it. And if you have any kind of short circuits or anything, the breaker will trip rather than you having some kind of an explosion in your home. Okay, and then like I mentioned, the negative goes straight to the battery. So now we've gone from the solar panels to the charge controllers, and we're into the batteries, and we're able to charge the batteries that way. And then, of course, we have two sets of breaker boxes in between. Now, I'll talk a little bit about 12-volt power again in our battery system, because this home can actually be run totally off of the 12-volt batteries, whereas a lot of homes, and especially grid-tied homes, tend to be 110-volt AC. And so the DC current, one of the things I like about that is you don't need an inverter. You can take your battery power, go directly to a 12-volt breaker box, and you can run all of your 12-volt appliances from that. Let me talk a little bit about the battery types. I've installed lithium-ion batteries. I've installed nickel-ion batteries. I've installed lead-acid batteries, including the AGM batteries. And for my own homestead, I chose the nickel-iron battery, which is kind of odd because that's the oldest type of battery out there. However, there are nickel-iron batteries that have been in use since at least the 1920s. And the reason for that is because the metal is very thick, it's very robust, and if it gets too old, you simply take the electrolyte out. They say it's non-toxic, and you can dump it right on your garden because it has a lot of phosphorus in it. But anyways, you take the old electrolyte out, you can store electrolyte powder anywhere. You can store it in your cellar. You can mix that up and then put new electrolyte powder in, and you have a battery for another 10 to 15 years. So I chose the nickel iron battery because you can refurbish it indefinitely. It's a great battery. Another reason <clears throat> that I chose the nickel iron battery, it has a greater depth of discharge than lead acid batteries. Lead acid batteries, if you discharge it down to 50, 55 percent, you start to damage that battery and it's not going to last very long as a lead acid battery. Now a nickel iron battery, you can get away pretty easily with discharging that battery down to 75 percent depth of discharge. So in this example, these are 700 amp battery cells, and there are 12 of them, so that means we have 700 times 12 is 8.4 kilowatts, or 8,400 watts of storage power. And if we want to use, let's say, three quarters of that, we can use 6,100 watts, or 6.1 kilowatts of power. That's 75%. Okay, so that's why I chose the nickel iron. Now, just real quick on the lithium ion. Lithium ion batteries are great. They are dependable. You can often discharge them down to 90% depth of discharge, which means you need a smaller amount of battery storage with lithium iron. And lithium ion, and it's very small uh, compared to this. You can mount them very easily on your wall, uh, as in a power wall. Um, what I don't like about the lithium ion is once it is depleted, so let's say after 10 to 15 years, about the same time that these last, that lithium ion is going to have to be recycled or thrown away. Whereas this, this one, you have the electrolyte powder ready, you can mix it up and you have power for another 10 to 15 years. You can store as much electrolyte powder as you want. It's dry. It'll preserve easily. Okay, so that's our battery system. And that's why I chose um, the 12 volt in this case. Now, after we leave the batteries, you can go two routes. In our case, like I said, all of our lighting is 12 volt, as well as our refrigeration, freezer, we have fans that are 12 volt. And all of those appliances are run from a circuit breaker panel. Now, skipping over this for a moment, over here we have a 12 volt circuit breaker panel. And this 12 volt circuit breaker panel goes to every house or every room in the house. And it's only from 5 amps to 15 amps. So these are all very low voltage. In fact, our refrigerator and our freezer together only use about 800 watts per day. I mean, that's amazing. So, um, this is our 12 volt circuit breaker panel, and if you use your 12 volts, you don't need this big monster right here. This is your inverter. Okay, so that whole part that I just explained tells you why I chose 12 volts, to avoid having to depend on this. 
Now I have this inverter that will convert our power into regular grid power, AC power. You can run power tools off of it, 15 or 20 amps, pretty easily can you run. And the inverter, the reason that I don't like to rely on this is because I have found that these will break every five to six years. So you can stock up on inverters if you have deep pockets and you can have three or four inverters uh, ready to go, lined up, or you can hope that there's not a long emergency and you just buy a new one. But if you were ever unable to purchase this piece of equipment, if you don't have a 12 volt system or another direct DC voltage based system, then the whole thing is going to be for naught. Okay. That being said, we do like to use power tools occasionally. It's also difficult to find, say, a 12 volt washing machine and a 12 volt air conditioner. So we use a 110 volt washing machine and a 110 volt air conditioner. And those are all uh, run very easily off of this power inverter. I will say, however, when you're using uh, high consumption appliances and power tools, this inverter will really drain down the batteries. Um, so we prefer to use it mainly when the sun is shining. And then you don't have to worry about draining down your batteries too much. Some people might not like that. There are limitations. But when you live off-grid, there are limitations in life. And it's healthy to have limitations in life. It's good to know that if you waste, you are going to be without later on. So it's really not... Um, a terrible thing. So moving on, <clears throat> at the same time that the power gets com that power gets combined from your charge controllers, so this is your solar power panel directly, gets combined into this big plate up here, that same power also goes to your inverter circuit breakers. And I have those turned off now because this is uncovered. But your inverter circuit breakers will then transfer that power over to your inverter. Right? And then from your power inverter, again, like everything else, you have a positive and a negative. In the case of DC power, black is your negative and red is your positive. And what I'd like to do is pop this off. All right, this is live AC power, so um, I have the inverter turned off, so it's safe. But you can see from here that the DC power goes in the inverter in these large cables. These are, I believe, one ot size cables. Um, and there's more about cable sizing and things like that in the book. And when the power comes out, <clears throat> it's going into a, a, a very, a much smaller 10 gauge wire, which then goes into our regular circuit breaker panel. So basically, this is a standard circuit breaker panel that you can find in any house and from your inverter. Um, you can wire into there. Now, I will say, don't wire this directly if you're attached to the grid. Um, you will you could cause an injury to someone in the power company. So you, if you're attached to the grid, a lot of this stuff, <clears throat> you're either going to have to have really good AC transfer switches, or you're going to have to have uh, someone from the power company approve your setup. So that's one set of AC wires that comes out and goes over to your circuit breaker panel. Now, <clears throat> there's another set of AC wires, and those AC wires come in to your inverter. And that's because an inverter can also serve as a charger, a battery charger for your system. So let's say you do have some fuel, you could have a propane generator, a gasoline or a diesel generator, and you're in the middle of the winter and you get no sun for two weeks and so your batteries are starting to drain down. Rather than damage those batteries, you can actually hook up or plug in this wire into your generator and it will automatically turn your inverter, reversing it, and turn it into a battery charger and charge up your batteries. Okay, so that's basically the wiring, how it is all put together in a nutshell. As you can see, <clears throat> I can give you a basic concept right now, but you really do want to have the book um, like mine um, that is going to explain to you so you can go back and review and make sure you understand the path of where this goes, and it's also going to help you with picking out what types of wires, what sizes of wires to use, how to put your batteries together, and things like that. Now, there's one other thing left to talk about within this power center, and that is your hub and your mate. Okay, all my equipment here is outback equipment, which I really like. Now, you have a, first of all, you have a hub, and so your hub has a LAN cable that goes to each charge controller, 
and it goes to your inverter, and it communicates between them so that your charge controllers to work, can work together, and they can give the proper amount of voltage and amperage to your batteries to charge them at the proper rate. So that's your hub, and it also has a LAN cable that goes over here to your mate. This is a mate 3, and a mate 3 allows you to set all of your charging parameters for all of your charge controllers at the same time. It also allows you to check on your inverter. If there's a malfunction, it'll tell you. It'll tell you if you're going to be charging your batteries with your generator through your inverter. And all of that can be monitored right here from the Mate 3. It even has a history of charging, so you'll know how much power has gone into your batteries over the past several days. You can monitor your usage that way. You can see if maybe you don't think you're getting enough. Maybe there's a problem with your batteries. So that's how the command center works. And so basically, you put all those components together, just to review quickly, the power comes in, goes through circuit breakers, goes into your charge controllers, goes through circuit breakers again, then it goes into your battery. From your battery, it can go straight to your 12 volt lights and 12 volt appliances, or it can go to your inverter and be converted to standard 110 to 120 volt electricity into your breaker box. And that's the basics of the inside wiring for a solar power center. Wind essentially can be wired in the same way or a very similar way. Micro hydro sometimes needs a charge controller like this, but depending on what kind you have. And all of those types of off-grid power are covered in my book. I'd love it if you check it out. I would love it also if you would remember to subscribe, click the like button, Feel free to make any comments, reach out to me if you have questions, and please take a look at my book. Like I said, it's a, it's a new bestseller. It's really flying off the shelves right now. It's called Thrive in the Coming Dark Age, How to Build the Ultimate Survival Homestead. I am the Homestead Ranger, and I really appreciate you watching today.